I know that uh, there was uh, two uh, specific news items that we wanted to address. One was about the World Central Kitchen um, and more theatrics, um, you know, in terms of like try what what John was was illustrating for us at the beginning of his segment, which was like these like very um, tedious. Uh, uh, ridiculous ways of trying to get, you know, the equivalent of like four or 10 trucks in while there's thousands of trucks waiting uh, at the, at the crossings. Um, so, and then we wanted to talk about Jared Kushner. Um, so uh, where should we start? Let's talk about the world's central kitchen. Asa, I know that you've been looking into that. Yeah. A little, uh, just to add quickly to John's, brilliant overview of what's really been happening there um you know this this temporary pier being built by the us it just it i mean it was first mentioned um to my knowledge well it first came to wide attention anyway with um, the state of the union address obviously um joe biden's state of the union becoming under you know increasing pressure um from around the world and from his own voter base really um for a ceasefire so he decided to put in the latest pr effort essentially saying that we're gonna build this so-called port and i think you know john makes a, a really good point that it's uh we shouldn't really call it a port um the jerusalem post actually said that this was Netanyahu's idea and that he suggested it to Biden in the first place. Um, this is what they reported on. And in uh, if uh, tomorrow you could show this video um, about uh, Biden actually was asked about it and asked asked about who the security for this uh, so-called port would be um, on by and he said the following let's just play this quickly i just saw a little bit on television uh, she said she's a very talented woman i i didn't quite understand the connection she was making question, do you still support ban and tiktok would you sign that bill if they pass it i'll sign it uh, Mr. President, who is going to provide security for the port you're planning to build to offer aid to Gaza? The is it really the idea? Okay. Are you sure Thank you. Are yeah. So you there that. you go. So very clear. Um, it just seems like it's another part of the occupation infrastructure, essentially. And it's also we should definitely mention this initiative is being led by a group called the World Central Kitchen. And as our, uh, if you could put the next thing up on screen tomorrow, the, it is an organization which is run by this celebrity chef whose name is Jose Andreas. Um, and uh, this was uh, exposed in a, in a Twitter thread by a regular contributor at this stage. Friend of um, the show. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and uh, as usual, they unearthed this uh, series of tweets. Um, you know, there was there was also you can see here that this is the Jose Andreas is the uh, the leader of this group, the World Central Kitchen, um, and there's there's a whole series of tweets in which he's basically pushing Israeli propaganda narratives. There's another one where he's attacking a Spanish uh, minister, the you know, one of the very few European ministers um, who was um, was actually calling for Netanyahu to be back way back last year in October, um, was actually calling for Netanyahu to be um, prosecuted in the ICC. And Jose Andreas reacted to that. Yeah, we can see the treat here by saying that um, you know, just the usual Israeli propaganda stuff. So this is the person leading the organization, um, which is supposedly going to be bringing aid through this so-called port. 
So basically, Jose Andres, this celebrity chef who runs World Central Kitchen and is now posing as the savior of Gaza by bringing in, you know, uh, maybe a truck's worth of food with all this fanfare uh, by the sea, um, supported the Israeli, supported and as far as we know, still supports the Israeli genocide in Gaza and uh, also parroted the Israeli propaganda against Palestinians and the resistance justifying the genocide. And I think that's such a significant finding, Asa, because, you know, you have to ask, why would Israel allow this one group to do this publicity stunt if they weren't already sure that this group was on their side? Because as we know, yeah. like we just saw, no, aid isn't getting in. All these trucks that are lined up, some for weeks, are not getting in. But they're allowing this boat to do this one stunt and to get all this publicity. And I think it's so important that people know this because I've seen many well-meaning, many friends uh, saying, oh, I gave money to World Central Kitchen uh, because they think, they genuinely believe sincerely that this is a worthwhile effort. And I think I think it's so important that people <clears throat> know the reality behind it. Yeah, and the Israeli defense minister, so-called defense minister, Yoav Gallant, um, has been reported in the Israeli press as saying that this uh, peer is going to actually help Israel defeat the Palestinian resistance. Um, and this is, of course, this is the same Yoav Gallant who infamously said that they were going to starve Gaza effectively saying uh, you know and that we're dealing with infamously said we're dealing with human animals here so you know if if this was a genuine um aid effort then why would he be saying that it doesn't make any sense um so yeah so to me it looks very much like i mean that the pier is just the latest facet of the israeli siege on the gaza strip um and um most of what I've said just here now is is reported in tomorrow's excellent article on this topic. Um, and she put it in, the, here's the article um, for listeners. It's called, What's the Real Purpose of Biden's Gaza Port? Um, and uh, in that article, tomorrow says, writes, the construction of a temporary pier and the dropping of aid packages from the sky are political gestures aimed at maneuvering and establishing political realities on the ground. So you can read more about all that in that article. Thanks for that, Asa. Um, and uh, let's, uh, ugh, I hate to do this to people, but um, let's turn to Jared Kushner. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, yeah, this, uh, this yeah. video has been circulating and I think it's worth watching just very quickly and uh, commenting on it. And this yeah. was apparently at an event at Harvard University recently. Just like a couple days ago, yeah. 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 Jared Kushner, something that they're talking about. Yeah. Jared Kushner, just to remind people, for those who don't know, being the son-in-law of Donald Trump, the husband of uh, Donald Trump's daughter. Ivan Ivanka, Ivan yeah. Ivanka Trump. And, of course, Gerald, Jared Kushner played a very key role in the Trump administration as sort of the main... Uh, person behind the so-called Abraham Accords, normalizing ties between Israel and various uh, U.S.-backed Arab tyrannies. Let's I mean, he's what... he's really he. Sorry, just to say, he he was really busy because at the same time that he was apparently solving the quote Middle East crisis, he was also in charge of the opioid crisis here in this country, and um, he's been a, a, a infamous or famous slumlord. Um, yeah, and he's New a property York. developer, and and it's yeah. it's almost certain that you know he benefited personally from all his deals with the Gulf regimes yeah. because his own businesses were in such financial trouble, and he's probably reaped a lot of investments mm -hmm. uh, from them. But in any case, this is what what he said about Gaza. Not in Israel. I mean, that's the first I've really heard of somebody, aside from President Sisi, uh, suggesting that these uh, that the Gazans who are trying to flee the fighting could take refuge in the Negev. Are people in Israel seriously talking about that possibility about hosting Gazan refugees in what is considered "quote unquote" Israel proper? 
I don't know. Yeah. I mean, but that would be something you would try to work on. I'm sitting in my yeah. beach right yeah. now, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this situation, and I'm just thinking, what would I do yeah. if I was there? And again, you look at, I mean, it, it, with Israel, it's just it's a different, it's a different thing, right? In Syria, when there's refugees, Turkey took them, Europe took them, mm -hmm. Jordan took them. For whatever reason, here in Gaza, there's refugees from the fighting, from an offensive uh, attack that was staged from Gaza. Israel's going in to do, um, you know, a long-term deterrence mission. And it's just, it, it's unfortunate that nobody's taking the refugees. Again, I, I think that the American government should probably have done a little bit of a better job to find a solution to that. As, yeah. as a broker, I think that there would have been a way. But if that's not a viable option, I think from Israel's perspective, um, it, it's just something that should be strongly considered. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously the reason they're not, you know, for example, the reason the Egyptians don't want to take the refugees, in addition to, of course, there being the domestic uh, uh, unrest that could result or the instability that could result, but also there are real fears on the part of Arabs, and I'm sure you talk to a lot of them who think once Gazans leave Gaza, Netanyahu's never going to let them back in. Um, maybe, but I'm not sure there's much left of Gaza at this point. So, you know, if you think about even the construct like, you know, Gaza, Gaza was not really a historical precedent, right? It was the result of, of a war, right? You had tribes that were in different places, but then Gaza became a thing. Uh, Egypt, you know, used to run it. And then, you know, over time, you had different governments that came in different ways. So you have another war, you know, usually when wars happen, um, you know, borders are changed historically over time. And so my sense is, is I would say, how do we deal with the terror threat that is there so that it cannot be a threat to Israel or to Egypt, right? I think that both sides are spending a fortune on military. I think neither side uh, really wants to have, you know, a terrorist organization enclaved right between them. I mean, Gaza's waterfront property, it could be uh, very valuable to uh, if people would focus on kind of building up, uh, you know, livelihoods, you think about all the money that's gone into this tunnel network and into all the munitions, if that would have gone into education or innovation, uh, what could have been done? And so I think that um, it's a little bit of an unfortunate situation there. But I think from Israel's perspective, I would do my best to move the people out and then clean it up. But I, I don't think that Israel uh, has stated that they don't want the people to move back there afterwards. Well, Just a, a sentient hemorrhoid, that man. Yeah. Well, that's a good way to put it. But a couple of things to point out that was very disturbing. But two things he said, I think Israel should move the people out. So that's open support for ethnic cleansing. And then he talked about the waterfront property being very valuable. And that a lot of people have commented on that. But I, I have to say, when I went to Gaza in 2013, and I remember we came in from Rafah and we drove up the coast. And during my stay in Gaza, I went up and down that road a couple of times. And especially in the southern area, Al-Mawasi, where now so many people are, um, you know, trying to find a shelter, that's the area where the Israeli settlements were. So that land is largely open and undeveloped. And it is beautiful, beautiful, open coastline. And I remember the feeling I had when I saw it. I said, oh, if ever uh, the Palestinian Authority types plus Gulf money get their hands on this, they will turn it into a private enclave and the people of Gaza will be shut out, as has happened, by the way, across the region. You know, in Lebanon, there's almost no private beaches left. In Jordan, there's very little price. If you go to Aqaba, it's all luxury developments. If you go to the Dead Sea, it's the same thing. That's the model of hyper luxury gentrification for the super rich, while the people don't have access to their own resources. And considering how important uh, the sea is to people in Gaza, even right now, as we heard, people, the only place they can go and bathe is the sea. The only people they can. And and throughout the siege, people in Gaza have talked about the sea as their only outlet. It's just so horrifying to have heard those those words by um, from J uh, Jared Kushner, um, and and then just compare his sort of disgusting, dismissive history of Gaza with with what we heard from Ilan Pape earlier. I just wanted people to see that. And 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 by the way, you know. We don't know if Jared Kushner would come back to the White House if Donald Trump uh, is reelected. It's possible he might. It's possible he might not. But 
I have to say, there's been no change in policy from Trump to Biden. Obviously, things are worse now with Biden, the worst case scenario genocide, but also the Biden administration has fully, fully, fully supported the so-called Abraham Accords policy uh, of Jared Kushner. So I think this doesn't just illustrate the thinking of Jared Kushner as an individual, but the the really the the vile, racist, and genocidal thinking of the entire American uh, political class. Yeah. Yeah. Kushner's just a bit more upfront about it. Yeah, he's just more honest. Absolutely. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit like, leave a comment. These engagements help us with the YouTube algorithm and it helps us to get around Silicon Valley censorship as much as possible. It does make a difference. You can also support our journalism by going to electronicintifada.net and clicking on donate now. Thank you.